of dudes and dudettes. Sorry about the hair. I think a cow licked me last night or something. But let's get into it real quick. So the Chargers signed Nelson Spruce yesterday, a wide receiver who started with the Rams and I believe went to Chicago and Kansas City. And then now he's with the Chargers. You know, we have a pretty loaded wide receiver core, but I think he's a guy that can make it because I had them picking him whenever he came out a few years ago. I wanted them to draft him, but see, I got to get my, my stuff ready for you guys. I got to screenshot that old stuff to show you who I wanted him on the team, like a Hayes Pollard as well, I believe. I wanted them to draft, and now he's on the team as well. So congrats. Hopefully he can make the team. I think he can, so be a great asset to have. He's a really good receiver. Then you also have Jarrell Casey, I believe, making 66 overall, the top 100 players. <clears throat> you know, to, to be honest, I know he's from USC, a defensive end, but I honestly don't remember him playing. There's just so many players at USC. So, you know, congrats to him. And I know he's been a, a really good player the last couple of years, but, you know, when he first started, I didn't even remember he was a, a player at USC, but that's pretty awesome. Then we also have Nico Mannion. Uh, 2020 point guard being offered by Duke yesterday or I think it was yesterday or a few days ago but you know I've had pretty high hopes for him he is a pretty interesting player he has a lot of upside but um I think he might reclassify into this year I think that's why they're only interested in him because he's looking to be probably like a one or two year player so he might graduate early and be Duke after next season should be pretty cool because I don't think we have anybody really for that next season. It was Joey Baker, but now he reclassified to this year. But I'm sure they'll be able to play together. So that's awesome. Right now I'm going to get into these three movies that I've seen recently or have been a fan of for a while. So let's get into this. Thanks for watching and let's see what you guys think. Okay, people, so we got the three G movies. Green Street Hooligans, which I've been a fan of for the past 10 years. I think it came out right when I was in high school, right out of high school. We also have a movie called Good Time with Robert Pattinson. And you wouldn't even know just by looking at that picture that it was him. He does <laughs> look a lot different even when you watch the movie. Then you also have The Greatest Showman, which recently came out, which I'm a pretty big Hugh Jackman fan. And, you know, I didn't see Les Miserables when another singing, you know, type of movie but this one was actually pretty good too so i'll get into the one i know a lot more past like eight years you know almost 10 actually green street hooligans you know i'm like i saw the trailer there, i'm like elijah wood trying to be a badass and you know and then it deals with this european you know these hooligans as they call them but they're like groups or gangs for the soccer teams out there in England, I believe, or Europe. And whether win or draw or loss after a match, they still end up fighting each other, which is a pretty crazy concept, but I believe it, it really does happen. So it was a crazy look into that and the story of why he gets there and how he becomes a different person and comes back out. And the ending of the movie is pretty, pretty it hits you pretty hard too. So that's why I like it as well. That one is a definitely must-see. They made, like, another one or two after that, but I haven't bothered seeing them, so don't go see them. And for uh, Green Street Hooligans, it's also was my introduction, I'm pretty sure a lot of people's introduction, to uh, Charlie Hunnam, who was a pretty big person right now. Even back then, you could kind of see that there was... He had a little bit of something, charisma and everything, but um, now he's become into a well-known actor, Pacific Rim, with Guillermo del Toro. And also, you know, he almost got the Fifty Shades. Luckily, he didn't do that. But Sons of Anarchy, sorry, Mike, I still haven't watched it, but I'm sure I will soon. And, you know, he also did King Arthur as well. So, you know, he was a, another guy who really, uh, you know, blew up after that, which is pretty awesome. So definitely another reason to check that out. <laughs> and we also have Good Time. I think this uh, was a, definitely an Oscar performance by not only Robert Pattinson, but the Safdie brothers as well, the directors. I mean, to me, it's not really that long of a movie. I think like an hour and a half around there. But the whole entire time, you're just like freaking out and all the situations he gets in. Because, I mean, in the beginning, him and his brother rob a bank. And then eventually his 
mentally challenged brother ends up going to jail and stuff happens to him in there and he knows it's probably just gonna get worse. So Robert Pattinson has to think of trying to get him to steal him out of not only prison, but then eventually maybe a hospital. And I'm not gonna tell you anymore because it just gets way more insane after that. So that's definitely a, a must see and definitely a great performance by him. Definitely better than the Twilight movies. <laughs> All of them combined, most likely. And then you also have The Greatest Showman, which was a more recent one. If you're into musicals, it's definitely a good one to see. If not, then it's fine too. You know, I think it, it's still a good movie for what it is. There's a few, like at least two or three good songs in there. But as far as like even watching the trailers and everything before, I thought this could have been an Oscar type of movie if the way they would have done it. But it was a first time director and I don't think he really had done much of big things back then, but it seemed like it was gonna go in a certain direction in the trailers, be a lot more serious maybe, and not kind of just brush off certain things that he either Hugh Jackman's character was doing or not, and maybe be more true to the story, but it really wasn't. So I think they just went a certain way to try to appeal certain audiences. And obviously it worked, it made quite a bit of money for itself, and that was cool. And it got some re recognition as well for I think one of the songs in the Oscars. But definitely a must see, really interesting movie. Could have been better in my opinion, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. You can't get the best people to direct stuff, but it's still a good enough movie to check out. All these movies are great to check out, especially the first two, the third one, if you're into that type of thing, it's definitely right up your alley. And Hugh Jackman, Zac Efron, Zendaya, they're all really good actors too to check out. So thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think, if you've seen these movies or not, and what you think about Nelson Spruce as well, Jarrell Casey. You know, let me know. Have a great rest of your day.